I don't believe if you want a quick fix to dodging and burning, you should be here because dodging and burning takes quite a lot of time and a lot of practice and also a lot of time. So if you're looking at improving your dodging and burning well, then this video is for you because it's, I won't say there's a beginner course to dodging and burning, nor is there an advanced course to dodging and burning, nor is there a short way of dodging and burning and making your skin look perfect without frequent separation. I put up a video on things you can do to improve your retouching and also the mistakes people are doing when it comes to editing and retouching in general. And I had a lot of feedback, I had a lot of people telling me to continue this particular video. So I'm going to dedicate a particular playlist to whatever videos I'm about to produce concerning editing. And also I'm going to, I think, tackle each and every um, post-processing or technique yeah post-processing technique regards to regarding to editing and retouching in general so in today's video i want to tackle dodging and burning what i see people do when they dodge and burn their images just so that they can make their skin look perfect what i feel like people should be doing or people should take notice of and how it will improve their dodging and burning technique like i mentioned earlier if you think this is a quick fix then this video is not for you so you can just log out and go watch other videos but if you are really interested in dodging and burning and becoming good at it you need to have time have patience and i'll take you through what i feel like you should know about dodging and burning and the mistakes i've seen people do during dodging and burning so like i said today's video is about dodging and burning the first of the playlist or should i say second because i'm going to put the first one there so the second of the playlist will be dodging and burning and for further videos if you people seem interested let me know then i'll continue with these kind of videos for each and every kind of technique there is to editing and retouching in general right so i have posted this image on my instagram page if you're not following me i'm going to leave a link down in the description you can go check out my instagram page i have quite a few images there which i don't put up here on my youtube just support follow share to a friend and we'll see how best we can improve from there so i have already retouched this with dodging and burning i have color graded it i've color corrected it i've dodged and burning so this is what happens when i do extensive dodging and burning without frequency separation right so today's video i want to show you what like i said i see people do when they dodge and burn but before that dodging and burning can be done with different um layers and with different techniques i know people who create new layers and d and b fill this layer with 50 percent gray change the blending mode of this layer to soft light pick up a brush to make sure your color checkers are black and white your foreground and your background is black and white to reset that you can either tap on these boxes over here the small one here or press d on the keyboard right then they'll create a helper layer and by creating helper layers if you've watched any of my previous dodge and burn videos i always say this this particular dodge and burn i mean this particular black and white layer i create but also i found a way you can choose to just make sure your background and foreground color black and white pick up the gradients map to and as much as this is giving me much contrast, I'm going to take away the contrast by tapping on it. Then make sure my smoothness is at zero. Then I have the appropriate black and white I'm supposed to get from this particular image. Because if this is 100, you see as contrast to it, not really a good representative of black and white. Right? So that's also one mistake I've seen so far from people I think I've thought or I've seen them do dodge and burn using inappropriate black and white layers to help them with their visual aids now i have this next i need something to make sure that i am seeing what i'm seeing perfectly that's where the curves come in and mostly i pull from the midtones right just so that i'm able to see where all the faults are so this let's get this out of the way visual aid one this should be the good way or the perfect way to creating your black and white visual aid just so that it can help you in your dodging and burning so that's one problem fixed 
now with brush settings mostly the people i see do dodging and bending end up using either their trackpads or their mouse that is so not a good um device to use when when dodging and burning dodging and burning requires um pressure sensitivity dodging and burning requires precision and accuracy if it is something you want to take on board or overboard with it so i suggest you get yourself a graphics tablet i'm using a graphics uh, wacom graphics tablet which is good enough for me i'm using a small one which is not costly i think uh, somewhere around uh, uh 100 dollars 99 dollars you can get yourself uh wacom graphics tablet the small size i make sure my brush size um i have picked the soft round pressure opacity and flow make sure the hardness is at zero make sure my smoothening should be at 10 right and opacity 100 just because I'll be using the pen, pen pressure sensitivity and my flow either on one or two depending on how fast I want to go with the dodging and burning. Like I said, there's no quick way to dodging and burning your images. You need to take time and make sure you dedicate time to it because if if you rush with it, uh, I'm not saying you cannot rush with it unless you're good at it. And with me even teaching you this, I'm not so sure I can even rush with dodging and bending because I have to take time and make sure certain imperfections are perfected with just dodging and bending as I only use dodging and bending for most of my retouching techniques. So like I said, this is the first one. With this um, layer, the problem is you're dodging and bending on the same layer, right? And that dodging and bending will be done with the black and white. So mostly your hand should be on the X on the keyboard and what i am looking for are imperfections on the skin just to make sure it smoothens out the transition from shadow to highlight or shadow to mid-tone or mid-tone to highlight or mid-tone to shadows seem smooth and seamlessly like a seamless backdrop if, if you get what a seamless backdrop is so looking at this i want to clear this dark patch over here right so i'm going to increase my brush size accordingly make sure everything is in check then let's paint away so take a look at this before and after before and after before and after now taking a look at this image you realize it's so cropped in that it's all up in my face right so zooming in wouldn't be a problem because after all this is how everyone is going to see this particular image that i am editing right here the if i want to use a bend all i have to do is just switch this then paint over with the dark patches where I feel like they need extensive care to make sure there's smoothening of light transition on the skin. So we have before and after. The mistake I see people do is that they keep their black and white on for the whole process, forgetting that no one is going to view this image in black and white unless you provide them with the black and white version. So you switch in between the visual aid just so you are sure that you're not going overboard with your dodging and burning. I hope you get what I mean. So I have this from before and after. One thing I don't like about this technique or this particular dodge and burn using just one layer is I'm just stuck on one layer and I'm not comfortable making adjustments where I know if I should dodge this side and I feel like it's too much. I have to make sure I switch it back to white and I bend. I mean, and I dodge the side again. So it's dodge, it's bend. Then make sure the bend isn't too much. Then I dodge. It's a good technique. This I normally use for when I want to do global dodging and bending. The one I wish I know we all know. So which is this? You bend. I mean, you dodge the highlight, right? Make sure you dodge the highlight. Then you bend your shadows. 
to bring back contrast. If I should turn on the visual aid, this is what I mean. So you can see the highlights being highlighted more and the shadows being darkened more to bring back that contrast in there. So that's one technique or one way of using dodging and burning, right? I have always been hearing people say, oh, what are you doing? Is it micro dodging and burning? Is it global dodging and burning? Dodging and burning is dodging and burning. There's nothing like micro dodging and burning. Well, you might say zooming in and minutely tackling a particular side of the skin is micro dodging and burning, but you still end up dodging and burning. I feel like I want to call it corrective dodging and burning because you're trying to correct the light pattern on your subject's face. So now this is out of the way. Let's create the one I use when I'm dodging and burning. I use curves to dodge and bend. So I create two curve adjustments layers. All right, name this dodge, name this bend. Make sure I pull in from the middle. I need a right amount of my dodge. Invert by holding command or control G, command or control I on the keyboard. Come to my burn. Bring this down also a good amount, right? Then I go into the colors because with the burn, you realize you're using a curve adjustment layer, and with curves, the RGB also pulls along colors. Same can be said for the dodge. So with the bend, I feel like after pulling the bend down, you get to see a lot of reds, right? So I go into my reds, then I bring my red channel down just a notch from the highlights because I am going to bend my highlights. Then I invert that. Let's group these two, sorry, to D and B curves now this is what i have available to me next i want to create i already have my visual aid one which i know everybody knows how to create by now what i know people don't understand and misunderstand most of the time is the inverted um visual aid and this is how you can go about it so you can see that with the uh, black and white visual aid you have um your highlights being your whites and your shadows being your blacks and midtones in between your your midtones end up being gray because it's either white or black am i right so with your inverted check layer it's just the inverted version of your black and white layer so i'm going to make sure i pick up my this time around i'm not going to use black and white because i want to invert it make sure it's white and black instead pick up my gradient tool i have this right here let's see smoothen it out make sure it's a zero then i have this inverted check layer as you can see the highlighted part of the face which was supposed to be the cheek let me turn off the visual aid one the cheek which we turn to be white now is black right now that is the inverted check layer and this helps with the minute details that you will miss if you're using the black and white. The black and white can be easy going, but if you don't take care, you get to miss minute details just because you've been staring at the screen for quite a long time. So I have my inverted check layer and to make sure I get to see these pronounced uh, minute details I might miss, I will introduce levels, right? And by introducing levels, the same way we introduce curves for this visual aid one, that's the same way we're going to introduce levels for this visual aid two. And with this, if I want to see the minute details, all I have to do is pull the slider in the middle. And the more I move it to the right, the more I blow out my highlights. So if I should turn this off, you can see that I'm blowing out my highlights. So you can see the highlights standing out more. That is why you're seeing everything to be black and if i move it to my left i'm blowing out my shadow so if i just turn it on you see everything to be white don't get yourself confused please so back in the middle 
it wasn't a one i guess so i have my highlights being black and my shadows being white that is for the inverted keyword is inverted so if i want to see the minute details i just move in here and then there you see the imperfections i was telling you about so let's group this and name this visual aid 2. right so if i should pick up my dodge and bend curves make sure my flow is on one let's take it to two for the purpose of this particular tutorial when i dodge dodge is adding light that means i'm adding white so when i dodge right now what you are going to see is that side being turned into black so if i dodge right now do you see what i mean and now turns into black so don't get yourself confused when you're using the inverted check layers make sure your dodge you should make sure you know that your dodge when you dodge the skin it looks black and when you bend it looks white now to the mistake with this particular um, um inverted check layer right with this particular inverted check layer if you don't take care you're literally going to flatten your image just because you will see every minute detail concerning imperfections on the skin i have done it before i've gone overboard with dodging and burning before right also our advice you create a duplicate of the dodge and burn layer then name this dmb fine because after doing everything here you might still find some minute details you can fix that's after taking your eyes off the screen and bringing it back which i mentioned in one of my ways of improving your retouching skills just so that you get your eyes refreshed to see all these other details you didn't see when you were dodging and burning now let's go into this for the purpose of the tutorial i'm not going to do everything i'm just going to say tackle this portion right so burn because i feel like these black patches are too much over here then i will dodge So this is our before and our after. When I turn this off, take a look at this. Before and after. Before and after. Now the problem I see people do, right, when they come to dodging and bend, is because they think it's so close up, they need to do quote unquote that micro dodging and bend, which I just did right now because I have zoomed in and I'm retouching or I'm dodging and bending. What you need to do. Is to take a scope at this particular image and see exactly what you need to do sometimes these minute details might go off if you do or if you dodge and bend on a larger scale so instead of me going too deep this way right what i can do now is go back to my window mode just so that i have one zoomed in version and one zoomed out version because after all you're not going to provide the image in a zoomed in version this way by the time you finish you're going to waste a lot of time even way way far past the normal time i know anyone who is supposed to be good at dodging and burning should use so first off you create a new window then we arrange to up vertical now we have this so if i want to work on the zoomed in version i am so sure that whatever it is i'm doing here i can see it over here but to clear up that mistake i was telling you guys about you have to work this way before you go in this way so it's always the wide version before you go in the deep version so take a look at this i want to make sure this this matches to 
the whole entire area i want to see a blend of either gray or either white or either darks just so that it blends smoothly because if you were to be using frequency separation i think that would be the end goal of you using frequency separation so we have the general idea from frequency separation we're going to incorporate it in dodging and burning and that's how you dodge and burn you make sure certain parts the same way you don't drag your highlights into your shadows and your shadows into your highlights using frequency separation with mixer brush dodge and burn you have that liberty to do it but the thing is you are either reducing the intensity of your shadows or you're reducing the intensity of your highlights or you're blending the shadows and the highlights just so that they all look like the metals i've been speaking a lot let me show you what i mean by that so i'll pick up the burn as you can see there are different patches you can see patches of dark spots in the white it's evident i hope you all can see it so the next thing you can do right i'm going to make sure like i said i'm going to burn and the burn introduces white am i right you might think it's only the burn you need and yes it might also be that that's the thing that's the only thing you need right now but when you're dodging and burning with this kind of dodging and burning technique where you're trying to match um these tonal variations when you're trying to match these tonal variations using curves the surrounding to which you're burning off the highlighted spots right will also increase because it was that surrounding that was making it stand out so make sure that surrounding to which you have reduced that darkness also has that bit of uh, um, evenness around it. Let me show you what I mean. Before and after. Before, take notice of the surrounding, the surrounding skin. Before and after. You can see it here too. Before and after. You get to realize that it has been evened out it doesn't look different or it doesn't one doesn't stand out and the other looking different that should be the word so that's how you go about dodging and burning with this kind of dodging and burning technique you even out these tonal variations when it comes to highlight shadows and mid tones I hope I've made myself clear. Let me turn off this and show you what I have done so far. Before and after. Before and after. Can you see how smooth it looks now? With even the zoomed in version. Before and after. Before and after. Now let's turn on the visual aid one. Right? Then see how best we can go about this. Now your dodge goes here because you're trying to reduce the blacks am i right so the best thing you need to do is to have these two so this will help you with the minute details you might miss after using this and this will show you a general overview and if you don't take care your eyes get used to it because human human eyes get used to everything your eyes will get used to this then you change it up with this then you change it back to the colored then you move through these three so colored then black and white then inverted black and white then back to colored that is how you go about dodging and burning to get your effectiveness like to get the maximum effectiveness of your dodging and burning technique right so i'm going to dodge this line out and this line will be seen here now let's see before and after before and after i hope you're getting this extensive and detailed explanation into dodging and burning because i feel like anytime i create a dodging and burning video i end up getting the same question all over again 
so if you don't even get anything from this particular video from all that i have said just know that with this kind of dodging and burning technique what you are doing is one with the dodge you are reducing the intensity of the shadow areas that are there in your image which are not making the shadow seem smooth on the skin with the burn you are reducing the intensity of a particular highlighted area on the skin that feels like it's taken out or it's taken too much attention from the image so i can burn this highlighted area just so that it feels even and smooth before and after as you can see right so let, when i turn when i turn the before you realize that there are some spotted highlights on this mid-tone area where you feel like it's a distraction and that's how best you can clean that and by doing that toggling between the before and after you realize the surrounding also has a bit of darkness then what do you do you increase its brightness okay now that's that for dodging and burning but before i end this video i want to say something quickly so i'm zooming in to i think what's what, what? this is ten thousand, so you can see the pixelated forms right let's see so if i zoom in all the way this way dodging and burning using the curves when you increase the brightness of um an image by using curves because you are in the rgb you move your rgb values also up hence introducing saturation into the image so when you increase your when you increase the brightness on an image you've also introduced saturation in the image when you reduce the saturation or i mean when you reduce the brightness of an image you are taking out the saturation of that particular image the fun fact is the moment you reduce the brightness you feel like you're getting you're seeing a lot of saturation but no that's not it you've actually reduced it and having a contrast curve which is the s curve the s curve now introduces contrast sharpness and saturation that's how powerful the curve adjustment tool is so after dodging and burning i had this i had this problem when i was also starting up with this dodging and burning technique after dodging and burning you end up having saturation issues where if you dodge extensively let's say i want to clear this dark spot over here right let me turn on the black and white now this is a dark spot i want to extensively clear this and by clearing this this is for the purpose of the studio so don't feel like this is intentional or well, it's intentional but that's not the right thing to do i have increased the saturation over here when i do the same here i have increased the saturation over here hence i would want to reduce the saturation of the said color that i have increased over here which mostly falls within your reds and your yellows so what i do normally is to introduce hue and saturation layer make sure i hold alt or option on the keyboard i have this i move the cursor in between these two adjustment layers then i clip onto the dot then i open this go into reds then i reduce the saturation of the reds so take a look at this side hence giving me back the color that was there when i dodged before i dodged i hope you get what i'm trying to say let me take that again anywhere you dodge you increase the saturation and if you perfectly dodge and bend this particular image and you're good to go you will realize that you have different saturation values on the skin where you dodged and where you bent so with the dodge i know i will reduce the saturation with the bend i know i will increase the saturation hence i'll make sure i create a saturation layer let's do that for the bend to create a saturation layer hold option or alt on the keyboard clip this onto the bend 
like i said skin tones are found within reds and yellows so mostly it's reds because even if i pick up the master tool and hover around let's see where we'll probably bend let's see we'll bend the highlights because yeah so pick this you realize it's in the reds then in the reds i mean with the bend because when i move down the brightness level i reduce saturation i'll do the opposite for the bend because i'll have to increase the saturation for it to compensate for that color loss with the dodge i'll rather reduce the saturation just so that i'll compensate for that color gain please don't get confused i feel like you're getting confused don't get confused go back and listen to it again then you understand why you need these saturation layers to help with your dodging and burning if you're solely going to look at dodging and burning i hope this video has been informative for the purpose of the tutorial i'm not going to dodge and burn this whole thing because it's going to take a long time but this is the end goal to the set image let me zoom out this is the end goal to the set image this is what i did uh, it took roughly two to three hours right so this is the end goal to whatever it is that we learned here today i hope this video was informative enough thank you for watching this particular video don't forget to subscribe don't forget to turn on the bell notification icon also leave down in the comment section below if you did not get anything i explained i will probably get back to it with a reply or create another video cons um based on the questions you asked also if you're interested in videos like these kindly let me know down in the comment section below share this video just so that i know you support this then i'll make more videos but if you're here and you follow me then you believe in what i do and you i'm sure you listen to most of the suggestions i make so kindly let me know down in the comment section below if these kind of videos interest you and you'd want to see more then i'll make more videos on the kind of mistakes i see with the techniques people use when they are editing and retouching i started with dodging and burning and i hope to do more videos in the future to come thank you and i'll see you in the next video peace